it's been said by many righteous people, it's written in many, many books that everything that a person experiences and go through in life, it's all coming for a purpose, it's from a reason, a good cause. And the Creator is observing and looking and checking, measuring, knowing everything specifically what is right for every person to go through in life. But still we're finding ourselves dealing with challenges in life that many times we don't have a clue how to go through them. <laughs> so okay, it's very nice that it's written in those holy books. Very much appreciated. I'm very happy that those righteous people, and we do believe that they knew what they were talking about, but how in the world it's supposed to help me when I'm going through doubts, domestic problems, issues that I don't have no clue how to deal with, fears, anxieties, people are coming to to hard, hard situations of thinking about suicidal thoughts and losing their minds, being so terrified from life, relationships that are become abusive, horrific, financial crisis, children, things that the person don't know how to deal with. And many of us trying to find solutions, going to consult with wise people, with rabbis, with people that known as righteous people. And not always the solution and the salvation is chasing us like a tail, not always. So then doubts are coming and questions and people start losing their faith and trust in heaven can start question, how can it be, I was praying so much, I gave so much money for charity, I did it with an honest heart, with pure intentions and how can it be, Shem didn't took, didn't accept my prayers, my effort, I was crying, I finished the Tehillim, I went for 40 days, I went up, I went down, I've been to that righteous man's grave, I read that prayer, I went to Eretz Israel to the Western Wall, I went to Marat HaMachpelah, we did this, we built a synagogue, we donated the Sefer Torah. Thousands and th thousands of, of, of very hard stories that it's very hard to give an answer to, especially when you're also dealing with the same situations, and finding yourself disappointed and lost and confused, right? So what a person should do? So some people cut their bills, some people cut their side curls or peot, some throw the kippah, some just put the kippah in the glove compartment over there for, for events, keep up for events. <laughs> Some throwing Hashem Barach behind their backs, but I'm judging favorably for sure, I can understand. If you have a relationship with a person and you're calling him again and again and again and again, <laughs> he's not picking up the phone, what's the use to keep on calling? I can understand that difficulty, but I remember once a very good friend of mine told me when we spoke about Hashem and I was a bit down, let's call it like that, and I told him that I really wish that Hashem will help me, so he told me, You should understand that you should succeed in life with Hashem or without Him. 
And it doesn't mean that that person did not believe in Hashem. That person is one of the biggest believers that I know, that I met in my life. And that person just gave me one of the biggest gifts that I could ever dream of. He woke me up again to realize how much I need to believe in myself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, you're not a vessel to be redeemed and to be saved. If the Creator is calling you, my son, and you're not recognizing yourself as his son, so you're not in the picture. If someone is calling you and telling you, hey, I have a big fat envelope just for you, your name is written and you don't recognize the name, you're not going to go and claim it. If someone is coming and telling you, listen, you are the most important, amazing, special, unique, gorgeous person in the world and you're not holding yourself as one, you're not going to go and claim your treasures, what that belongs to you. It's written on the first man, on Adam Rishon, that he had a lacking. He had a problem in his faith in the wise people. He had a lack of emunat chachamim. First man had a lacking in emunat chachamim. Who are those chachamim? There was no one wiser than him, there was no one there, it's only him. If you want to say that he didn't have faith in Hashem, okay, you would say he didn't have faith, he didn't trust Hashem. They didn't say that. They didn't say that Adam Arishon didn't have faith in Hashem. They said that he didn't have faith in the wise people. Who was the wise person in that generation? It was him. And he did not believe in himself. After he heard the commandment of Hashem, that Hashem told him, listen, my only child, you not allowed to eat from that fruit, from that tree, don't eat it. Don't start with that story. It's the only fruit you're not allowed to eat. That's it. It was a very clear commandment. It was a very clear order. But when the snake came in his snaky way, sneaky way and start lying and start with his theories and all of his assumptions and wisdoms and start circling him like you know that the snake is circling the person with negative thoughts and start giving him another doubt and another reason why he should eat and he already start working on his wife as well and then his wife she came with her approach and her vision and on life and her understandings, it all became to be a mess. Where it became to be a mess, it's very clear. Hashem said no. Other people says yes, who cares? Who that cares, cares. And the reason that he cared about other people's opinion was because that the words of Hashem were not clear. But it was 100% clear. Hashem said, don't eat it, there are not, no two options in that case, don't eat. And he ate because he couldn't believe in himself that he can understand the commandments of Hashem, of the Creator. When the snake came and started questioning him and seeding those doubts inside of his mind, taking care of his emotions, and making sure to show him how wise the snake is and how silly Adam Arishon was and putting another idea and another concept and tilting that conversation to another direction and then building some amazing fantastic theory and then breaking it to pieces and making fantasies and stories and confusing him. The only thing that he really touched was the self-confidence of the first man. The damage that the snake caused to the first man was to doubt himself that he is wise enough to understand the commandment of the Creator. And now when you're questioning yourself, you're open to all of the fears and to all of the doubts. 
If you're going to check yourself, you will see that you received from heaven the tool to recognize the truth. Which truth? The divine truth. The verse is saying, Divrei emet nikarim. You can recognize words of truth. Now you're sitting in front of your dining table. You have an amazing plate with amazing, tasty, satisfying food. And you really want to eat. And you start eating. And you made the bracha, you blessed on the food, and you're enjoying the food. After a few minutes that you're eating, chewing, swallowing, enjoying the food, everything is amazing, delicious, great. Suddenly you have a thought in your mind, maybe I shouldn't continue and eating. Now, in that situation, you have two options, or to ignore that thought, reject that thought, and continue eating, or to listen to that voice and to put your fork down the side of your plate. The only thing that you need to check in that situation, where this voice came from. Is that voice trying to build me or to break me? Is that voice telling me, listen, you ate enough, you're already satisfied, it was a good meal, Tasty. Don't take too much, don't eat too much, more than you need, because you know you're going to be heavy after it. You know your stomach going to hurt. You know it's going to damage you. You don't need. It's not good for your weight, for your cholesterol, for what I don't know what. If it's a building thought, if it's a positive thought that is coming for you, to help you, to support you, to build you, you must listen to that voice that is hinting you to the right direction to listen to the voice of Hashem that is speaking to you right now in divine spirit from inside because where in the world that voice came from? That thought, where did it came from? If not from inside. But if you see that those thoughts that are coming are negative thoughts. Oh, look at yourself. Again, you're eating like an animal. Look, you're so fat already. That food and this and that. And that voice is coming to break your spirit, to knock you down, to make you upset, to make you sad, to make you depressed. I can't even eat right now. I'm not allowed to eat. It's not good for me. And now you get all upset and angry and frustrated. So now, that's not an advice that you should follow. So what you should do, you sh should ignore that negative way of thinking, those negative bad thoughts, and keep on eating. And saying to Hashem, Yitbarach, please Hashem, let me keep the verse, Lech echol besimcha lachmecha, that I will be able to eat my meal with joy, with a happy face, with a happy heart. Let me dine and be happy and be satisfied, and healthy, and strong, and powerful. Let me continue my eating until I'll be really satisfied that I will eat in a holy way, that I will be pure. Because even that negative thought is coming for a purpose, but not for a purpose to follow. For a purpose to wake you up, to pray on your food, to eat in purity, in holiness, to remember Hashem to aim your holy thoughts while you're eating. Something good can come out of every thought that crossed your mind, that came to your heart. But you should follow only the ones that are building you. So now you see, in that example that we brought, that a person got the tool, the weapon, the ability to recognize the truth. What is the truth? Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said, good thoughts are the good inclination. It's the voice of the righteous man. It's the voice of the soul. It's the voice of God that is dressing himself in some holy messengers, angels, righteous people, verses, whatever, to build you as a child, as a creation of Father in heaven. But negative thoughts, bad thoughts, thoughts that are bringing you to sadness, to frustration, to being sad and depressed, confusions, 
Those kind of thoughts, Rabbi Nachman of Weslev said, are the thoughts that are coming from the evil inclination. Those are the thoughts that are coming from the voice of the snakes. Those are the evil whispers of the snake. If they are coming to break your spirit, don't follow them. Now about food it's easy, but if those negative thoughts are coming and chasing you when you want to learn Torah, when you want to go and pray in a minyan, when you want to go and keep mitzvot, when you go to want to go to, to, to dip in the mikveh, what are you going to do then? Again, you must believe in yourself. You must believe that if you went and thought about what had happened inside of you and you tried to analyze the thoughts and you tried to observe and to listen to your inner voice and to check, was that thought that I just had, was it positive and building or was it negative and destroying? And then if you recognize that voice as a positive voice and you're following that voice, that means that you believed in yourself. And if you went after the negative thoughts, after the thoughts that takes you to be scared and afraid and lose your mind, so you don't believe in yourself. So you follow your fears, your anxieties, your bad attributes, your bad midot, and you're not allowed to do that because Hashem is all good. And the verse is saying on the tree of knowledge, on that tree, Etz Hadat, it's written, Etz Hadat Tov Vera Al Tochal Mimeno. The commandment of the Creator to the first man was Etz Hadat, the tree of knowledge, of wisdom, Tov Vera. There is good in it and bad in it. Don't eat from it. Lo Tochal Mimeno. Don't eat from it. But in the future to come, when we will clarify everything and will fix everything and we are now in that stage. After hearing this class, after hearing that advice of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, every single one of us got that ability to follow that advice that will be the nature of the future to come. That's the wisdom of the world to come. The ancient wisdom, the real intention of the Creator while giving that verse also to the first man, that we gonna read that verse in that way, to say, Etz Hada'at Tov, the tree of wisdom, tree of knowledge is good, Vera Al Tochal Mimeno, and don't eat the bad side of it. We're saying the same words, we're reading the same verse, we have not changed one letter in that verse, just we're reading it in a different way. Instead of saying that that tree contains good and bad, don't eat from it at all. That is the thought of people that are afraid. That is the thought of people that are saying, listen, I'm not taking no risks in my life. I don't know if it's not guaranteed, if I don't have people that will sign, that will back me up, if you don't bring no, how you say, guarantors, if you don't, I don't do that. Okay, that is the way of thinking of people that don't have self-confidence, people that are not sure that the Creator loves them, that He will back them up that He will help you to succeed. Those are people that are following their fears, their anxieties, their traumas, the fears of other people that are warning them and telling them and trying to help them and to save their lives and burying them alive. While they're still breathing, they live their life in grave. Can't move a finger. Afraid to go to the supermarket, can't talk to people, cannot offer yourself to no job, cannot ask for no raise in your, in your salary, cannot go and travel the world, cannot go and learn Kabbalah. How many students of mine are asking me, am I allowed to learn Zohar? Is it allowed to learn Zohar? Open the Zohar Kadosh, read what's written in the Zohar Kadosh. Amazing, fantastic book with Midrashim. You're gonna enjoy. And if there are parts that you can't understand, okay, lucky you, there are parts that I cannot understand also. So what? 
Sit and relax and be quiet and breathe. The fact that you read from the Zohar Kadosh, it doesn't mean that now you became to be the Mekubala Eloki, the godly man. Oh, now you're so afraid to destroy the combinations of Hashem and Barach. Come on, who are you to destroy? You think that you're affecting, and if you think that you affect, so even more so. So go and pray, go and do tshuva, go and learn Zohar Kadosh. Prepare yourself to that learning. Wash yourself, purify yourself, go to the mikveh, pray to Hashem, please Hashem, that when now I'm going to go and learn Zohar Kadosh, that only good is going to come out from that learning. Please Hashem, if you're so important, how can you put that book aside? You must learn Zohar Kadosh. Nonsense of people that are following their fears, but a person with confidence, why you're not sinning? I'm asking you, why you're not going clubbing in Shabbos? Why you're not doing drugs all day long? Why, why you're not dating thousands of women? Why, why you're not drinking alcohol every morning when you wake up? Why are you sober? Why you came to my class? I'm asking you, why? Because you're afraid to be punished in hell? Crazy! If that's the reason why you came here, you're crazy, you lost your mind. You lost your mind, you don't have no connection to the real purpose of Hashem. You're serving Him not to be punished by Him. If this is the nature of God, I'm not serving that kind of God for a second in my life. I would never do that to myself. I would betray myself so badly to follow such a cruel leader, such a vicious king that will destroy me. If I'm just gonna move, no way. If not out of a love, if not out of honor, if not out of respect, if not out of appreciation and gratitude, so why to serve? To serve someone? To sell yourself to be a slave to someone that will punish you in the end? We know that it's written that no one can fulfill his obligation. There is no righteous man in this world that will do only good and not gonna sin. Verse, the Bible, the Torah is saying that to you. You can't move to the sides. No person went out from this world without making mistakes. King David made mistakes, Abraham Avinu made mistakes, Yaakov, Yitzchak, Moshe, Aharon, Yosef, everyone made mistakes. King Shlomo, everyone made mistakes. Everyone. Every person in this world made mistakes. Why? Because Hashem Barach made the world in that way that every person gonna fail. So now, what? He created the world in that way that I'm gonna fail in that world and then I'm gonna be punished? No way. So what's the solution? The solution is tshuva. He also gave you the key to solve all of your problems. That if you sinned, because you've sinned, because you're gonna sin. Because for sure you're going to sin. Because there is no person in this world that will do only good and not going to sin. Not going to cry. It's not a reality. It's not an option. So, God gave you a key. He gave you a solution. What's the solution? Come back to me, my child. If a man or a woman made a crime, made a sin, they need to come and confess. That's it. That's a solution. Now, you don't believe in yourself and that's your problem. That the tshuva, that you confess, will help you. Will erase the sin. You came to Hashem, you apologized, you told Him, I'm sorry. You asked for forgiveness. You asked for Him to help you not to do that sin anymore. And you keep on blaming yourself on doing that. And you cannot forget it, and you cannot forgive yourself, and you keep on blaming yourself, even though that you already took his advice, and confessed, and regret, and did tshuva, and now it's written that that tshuva is bringing you to a higher level, even than the level that you were at before you sinned. But you don't buy that. Why? Because you choose not to believe in yourself, and to follow the doubts of the evil inclination. So you're one of the soldiers of the snake instead of being one of the soldiers of King David that opened for us the path for every individual to know that it's in your power to do tshuva.
You want to believe Mashiach? You want to believe the advice of Mashiach? Mashiach is King David. King David, this is the eternal king of our nation. He is the king of, of, of all nations in the, in, in the future to come. Hashem said, gave that promise that King David will be the eternal king of the world. That is the Mashiach, King David. Now Hashem Barach guide King David with that advice and he failed him in a horrific failure that the prophet came to him, Natan Navi, and rebuked him and told him that tale on that ship that was belonged to that poor man. And that person came and stolen that sheep from that poor man and killed that man and took the sheep and went. And King David said that that person is a sinner and you must kill that person. And Natan the prophet told him, you are that man that you now judged, that you now set his um, punishment to death. It's you. And King David was honest and righteous enough to say, you are right. I was wrong. And he admitted, and he confessed, and he went, and he did tshuva. And he came back to Hashem. And there is a simple way how to come back to Hashem. It's not an advice that's written in the books. It's not an act of chassidut that only the unique ones can do that. The holy, righteous man, the most famous rabbi of all times, the Rambam HaKadosh, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, wrote for us the exact way how to do tshuva, how you should come back to Hashem. Simple path of three steps. One, you need to tell Hashem Barach exactly what you've done. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev called it Hitbodedut. Not only Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, also the Ramchal Kadosh and many other ancient righteous people called that act Hitbodedut. It's prayer. It's a certain way of prayer that you just talk to the Creator like you talk to your best friend and you tell him, listen, my father, this morning I messed up. I woke up late and I didn't catch the minyan, I didn't go and pray in shul. Hashem, Father in heaven, I'm sorry. Today when I saw that person, I had negative thoughts about him, some kind of jealousy, hatred. I wished for that person that something bad, chas v'shalom, will happen to him. Hashem, I confess. Wonderful. That's the way to do the first step. You need to confess on that sin. I saw that amazing BMW. It was not mine. It's not mine. Hopefully it's not going to be mine. But when I saw that, I was jealous. I was looking. I was staring at that car. I wish to have that car. Hashem, I'm sorry. I wanted something that not belongs to me. Every time that you feel that you've done something wrong, you must make that first step. As a beginning of the process of your tshuva, you need to tell Hashem Barach your, your, your mistake. You need to, to confess. You need to tell him. That is the first part. It's not that hard. You had a negative thought on your wife, on your partner, or your child. You said the bad word, the negative word, the curse. You wished something bad to happen. You ate without blessing. You didn't wash your hands. You didn't say the blessing of after the food, Birkat Amazon. Whatever you did that was wrong, you need to find the right time to remind yourself of that mistake, of that crime, of that horrible sin that you committed, and just to confess first step of tshuva. Not that hard, right? First step. Second step, you need to regret. You need to ask Hashem, is it too late now to say sorry? That's it. You just need to apologize to tell him, Hashem, I'm sorry. Hi, I'm sorry. I feel bad about it. I was talking nonsense, Hashem. I was not learning with all of my powers, Hashem. I feel bad about it. That's the regret. Just share. Just tell Hashem, Hashem, I feel bad. 
I forgot saying Birkat Amazon. I ate my bread without washing my hands. I didn't go to the mikveh today. I was violating Shabbos Hashem and I feel bad. I smoked a cigarette. I felt so horrible Hashem. I regret. That's it. Second part. So hard. Not so hard. Not so hard. You're able to do that. How much time it's going to take you to make those two steps? Hashem, this morning I didn't go to Mikveh and I'm sorry about that. Two seconds. Three seconds. Hashem, this morning I looked at that house. It wasn't mine. I feel bad about looking at that house. Three seconds. Finished. Two steps. Third step. You need to accept on yourself not to do that ever again. Now I'm asking you, are you able to accept that on yourself? Accept now on yourself. Never ever to be angry again. Hashem, this morning I was angry, I was upset, I was saying things in the wrong way, I was too hard, I'm sorry, I feel bad about that, I'm never going to be angry again. Uh, wrong. Mistake. Why? You lied. You just lied. Third part is the hardest part. Impossible part. So what? What are you going to say now? That you cannot complete your tshuva, that you can never be forgiven on your crimes, on your sin. How can it be? Hashem gave us that solution of tshuva. Hashem said to us, and it's written in the Zohar Kadosh, for you ones that are not worthy enough to read Zohar Kadosh, I'm going to tell you. It's written in the Zohar Kadosh that tshuva mo'il kol. The tshuva is helping for everything. The tshuva is good for every kind of crime, every kind of sin. So now, how can it be if we're not able to do tshuva, to complete the tshuva by the guidings of the Rambam HaKadosh? So it means that the tshuva is above us. You cannot reach it. So it's impossible for us to solve our problems? No. For sure wrong. So what's the answer? It's written in the Gemara HaKadoshah that... If the Creator will not going to help the person, the person can never win the evil inclination. You have a war that caused the war against the evil inclination. And in that war that you are facing an angel that made out of clear fire, a hidden fi flaming fire that you cannot see, that you cannot track, that you cannot watch yourself from, because he can attack you from the back, but through that person, through that situation, to come from your thoughts, from your emotions, from, from heaven, it can attack you, from the holy books, it can hit you. What are you going to do? You cannot face him. You cannot recognize him. You cannot co take control on him. You cannot overpower on him unless the Creator will help you. So it's a clear knowledge that's been revealed to us that without the help from heaven, that the Creator himself will ha help you to beat that angel, to overpower on him, to knock him down. You cannot do it on your own. For sure. Okay, great. So now we understand that without the help of heaven, there is no way in the world that we will be able to fix ourselves. So what is the way for us to fix ourselves? How are we going to receive that help, siyata dishmaya, from heaven, support from heaven, assist from heaven, if we're going to call Hashem? Because when you call Hashem, Hashem, Hashem is coming and helping you. Because Hashem is close to everyone that will call Him with truth. So, there is the solution to that problem that we found before. Before we said, I'm not able to accept on myself not to sin, because now we just learned that if Hashem will not going to help me, I'm not going to make it without Hashem's help. So, what is the solution? Call Hashem for help! And then after you called Hashem for help, you fulfilled your obligation in the third step of the Rambam by doing tshuva. Because the only thing that you can do really to watch yourself from failing again is to ask from heaven to help you. That's the only thing that you can do. To pray. How you ask? Ana Hashem, Oshia, Na. 
אנא השם, הצליחה נא, פליז השם, help me not to be angry again, פליז השם, help me not to look at other people's properties ever again in my life, פליז השם, that I won't speak bad tongue, bad words on someone else, that I will never gonna say anything evil, that I'm never gonna curse ever ever again, that I will always go to mikveh, that I will always keep Shabbat, that I will never gonna fail with נטילת ידיים, And that's the end of the story. And if you made those three steps, first of all, confessing. Second step, regret. Third step, just asking, requesting, please Hashem, help me not to fail again. You completed your tshuva process. Now, there is the fourth hidden part to the tshuva, that you need to believe in the power of your tshuva. That you need to believe that really now after completing those three steps, your sin been erased. Because that's what Hashem said. Hashem said that if a person will follow those steps, he will atone, he will erase that sin. And that sin already been forgiven to you. Just you need to believe in that. And when those negative thoughts are attacking you, but look what you've done, you have something to answer. I did my part. I did it my way. I did Shiva. That's the only thing I know. I know how to come back to Hashem. Not to sin, it's not something that I know how to do. I don't know how to do that. I don't know. How I'm not going to look at other people's properties? Uh, I'm not going to go out for my house. Okay, let's say that I'm not going to go out for my house. Am I not about to sin in my own house? A person not sinning in his own house? Thinking negative thoughts, screaming at his children, arguing with his wife or a woman with her husband. You can not avoid yourself from sinning, from failing. It's not something that you can do. You can only, every day, on a daily basis, ask from heaven to receive some help, some support, more power, more wisdom, more knowledge, more tools for life. But except of that, you can do anything. So, you need to believe that if you did your part from heaven, they're going to help you to complete, to achieve perfection while serving the Creator. So, you must follow your faith in the Creator by building your faith in yourself, that you are a Baal Tshuva, a person that is doing Tshuva. And now every person wants to be always like someone else. And a Baal Tshuva, he always wants already to become righteous. That's his dream. When I'm going to become righteous. But you're a Baal Tshuva. You're never born to be righteous. You're not supposed to be righteous. And it doesn't mean that tomorrow, suddenly you cannot find yourself being righteous. If Hashem will make you righteous, you will become righteous. But now, as a Baal Tshuva, As a person that all day long is supposed to do tshuva on his sins, on his mistakes, you have an amazing job. So take that job and do it. You are a Baal Tshuva. You're not supposed not to sin. You're not able not to sin. You can just do the best that you can on doing tshuva, on confessing, on regretting, and on asking for the future. And if you're doing that, you're achieving your completion. You're reaching your goal. You're fulfilling your obligation. Because that's the obligation that the Creator expects you to fulfill. That you will do tshuva. So now, by being a Baal Tshuva, it's written on you that you can reach a level that will be even higher than the level of the complete righteous ones that never sinned in their lives. But you need to believe in that. And to believe in that, it means to believe in yourself. To believe in yourself, it's not to believe that you are so powerful, that you're so great, that you're amazing, that you're fantastic and awesome. No. To believe in yourself, it's to believe in Hashem. That's why we said that to believe in Hashem depends, faith in Hashem depends in your faith in yourself. How come? Because to believe in yourself, it means to believe in the endless love of, And mercy of the Creator, even on a person like you, even on a person like me, that messed up big time, failed in all the mitzvot, 800 times in every mitzvah. 
violated more Shabbos that he can remember, that ate more treif and nevelot than he can remind himself, that he talked more hours of Lashon Ara than learned Torah, that he was looking and staring on the most filthiest corners in the universe and saw many, many, many evil things and horrible things and pictures worse than, than you can imagine and much, much more than holy faces of righteous people and, and chefze mitzvah and, 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 and pieces of mitzvot that, that the person keep mitzvot with, like etrog and lulav and sefer Torah and whatever. So a person that sinned more than he kept Torah or mitzvot still got a solution. Why? Because the mercy of the loving Father is endless. And His mercy is on all of His creations. Now to believe in myself, it's to believe that He loves me enough to heal me even though that I messed up big time. Even though that I ruined and I spoiled and I destroyed and I lied and I cheated and I ruined and I stole and, and I, I, I corrupted and I did evil things. What can I do about that? Is there something that I can do? I cannot travel to the past. I cannot uh, jump between the, the worlds. I cannot go back to be a... I cannot do that. And who is promising me that if I'm going to come to a different, another lifetime, I'm not going to mess up again? Who is promising me that? So what's the solution for a person like me? Tshuva, to come back to Hashem. But you need to do it with an honest heart. Not to act like a Baal Tshuva. Not to pretend to be a Baal Tshuva. Really to regret and to apologize in front of Hashem and to tell Him, I'm sorry. I don't know what else I can do about it. I'm sorry. But I promise you that, that when you're going to keep that mitzvah of tshuva and really going to come back to Hashem, you're going to feel how He is removing the yoke and the sorrow and the pain and the stress off your back. And suddenly you're going to feel much, much better about yourselves. You'll feel so much better, so relief, so good that it will give you a push for the future. You will feel the love and the warmth and the kindness of the Creator. And it will push you toward a better future of faith in yourselves. Finding the ability to be happy with who that you are, to be happy with your share, to enjoy the gifts and the treasures, the talents, the wisdom, the character that the Creator gave only you the abilities that you have, the power that you have, the wisdom that you have, the memories that you have, your life experience, and you're going to use all of those gifts to help others. You don't need to be a genius to help others. You just need to have that faith in yourself to be able to share from your life experience and to guide other people, to give them right advice, to aim them to find their true selves, that they will become who that Hashem made them to be. You don't need to change. You just need to dare to be who that you are and to apologize if you feel wrong about something you've done and to say, I'm sorry to the people that you hurt their feelings and to apologize and to try not to do that again and especially to pray for that. Please Hashem, help me not to fail. And when you did those three things from your side, now it's Hashem's turn to erase and to forgive you on all of your sins. But to succeed in that path, a person must believe in himself, that Hashem loves you, the Creator, He loves you enough to help you with everything you need, especially with giving you faith to believe in yourself, mm -hmm. to follow those advice, to be a happy personality, as happy as you can be. Even if your happiness now is not to dance and to clap your hands and to buy a nanach truck and to go and dance in the streets. You don't need to reach that level in two days and maybe in 20 years and maybe ever. You just need to be complete with yourself, to feel that you are honest, that at least I know that I'm doing the best that I can. At least I'm being honest. I'm not hiding from no one. 
I'm not ashamed to be who that I am. Yes, I am a bad tshuva. I'm not a righteous man. I'm not a holy rabbi. I'm a person that is ready to admit on his mistakes, that is willing to take responsibility on his actions, that if I realize that I took something that not belongs to me, I'm willing to pay back, to give it back, to apologize, even if it's going to put me in an embarrassing position, in a low place. From that low place, I'm going to receive the wisdom of Hashem. I'm going to receive the Torah. I'm going to be humble. I'm going to understand that the Creator, He commanded me to come back to Him, and I am keeping that commandment. And on people like us, on people that are following that light of tshuva, of simple faith, of honesty, of truth, the verse is saying that Am Israel cannot be redeemed unless they're doing tshuva, and when they're doing tshuva, immediately they're being redeemed. And Am Israel nigalin ela betshuva. And when they're doing tshuva, immediately they're being redeemed. So you can live your life in that feeling of redemption. And really to see the redemption take place in front of your eyes when you are doing your part, completing your tshuva. And especially when sharing and letting other people also to enjoy the fruits of your actions and to learn from you how to come back to themselves, not to imitate you and to follow you. You're not a torch of light. You're not a pillar in the darkness. No. You're an honest human being, a friendly person that is willing to give a hand to his friends, to let other people lean on him and follow him to become themselves, to find themselves, their true selves, no one is more unique than the other. If you did a lot of tshuva, it's amazing, we're happy for you. It doesn't put you in a higher standard, in a higher level. Amazing, we're happy for you. You did something good with your life? Amazing. I'm now in my baby steps also trying to achieve that light. And we're all in the same place, in the same board, boat, sailing together to a better future. That's the project of our life, to spread the faith and the light in the world, not only to our nation, to the rest of the world, to all of the nations, to be light to the nations, that everyone going to know what did the Creator told us in the ancient days, in the earliest days, when He chose us as a nation to give us the Torah, that was the light that He gave us, the light of truth, Torah Emet, Torah emet natan lano. He gave us the Torah of truth to teach the truth that you can recognize the truth that you don't need to learn Kabbalah to know the truth that you don't need to be a Hasid to learn the truth you don't need to be from an amazing uh, legacy famous family from the seed of King David no words of truth you can recognize inside of yourself by being honest with yourself, listening to the voice of truth that is speaking from your heart, your emotions, your senses, the thoughts that are crossing your mind, that are going through your heart when you eat, when you talk, when you walk, when you think, when you read, when you speak to someone. And while you're talking, you have certain thoughts. Check. Are those thoughts, are positive thoughts that are building me? I need to follow the voice of Hashem, the voice of good, that is divine spirit, that is speaking from my throat, that is speaking from my heart, from an endless spring of knowledge and wisdom. And if those thoughts are negative, I'm not allowed to follow sadness, and anger, and jealousy, and, and confusions. So I'm not following the dark side, I'm following the light. And if a person will get used to following those thoughts, develop that self-awareness, he can achieve wisdom from the ancient archive of the earliest days, from Ginzaya de Malka, 
from the secrets of the Creator. Because like we said in the beginning of that class, where in the world those thoughts are coming from? Listen to them. Follow them. That's the voice of Hashem that is talking to you from inside. Okay? Thank you very much. Be blessed. Chazak this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.